Falcon is on the launching pad of another upward leap to blast himself out of his air ocean into the vast hostile vacuum of space. Where stars are born and get old and die. Is this another step in evolution? Space. How big is it? Is there an end to it? What's out there? Other life? Other civilizations? The secret of the universe? Who knows? But what a challenge to the spirit of man. But have we enough knowledge to reach for the stars? Well, let's jump ahead a few years and take a look at a small miracle of American know-how. A nuclear-powered space research laboratory. Providing controlled space travel within commuting distance of home. Nicknamed know-how, it speeds around the Earth at 18,000 miles an hour in a permanent 95-minute orbit with its own private shuttle plane parked at the side door. In this tiny man-made moon, men and women live, float, and work. Object? To explore the strange and often unexpected challenges of outer space. And what are some of the challenges? Well, take zero gravity. That's maybe the biggest challenge of all. Special shoes that stick lightly to special carpets, like burrs to a wool sweater, to hold the feet on the green upright floor. But the $64 billion question is, can men and women function for months in this dreamlike weightless condition? What does weightlessness do to his stomach? How does zero gravity affect his sleep? Will his muscles get flabby? Or will his bones go soft? Without gravity pull, will the heart and the circulation remain normal? Or the brain? And how about groceries, where there are no celestial supermarkets? Well, for food, synthetic wafers that cook up into steak dinners. For water, distillation equipment that reclaims 90% of their own waste liquids. For baths, cleansing tissues with special lotions. And for air, they experiment with tanks of algae, special kinds of bacteria, and beds of plants, all converting exhaled carbon dioxide into life-giving oxygen. But what do the plants themselves think of all of this? Hey, Poppy, maybe I'm crazy, but aren't the days shorter up here? I'm dizzy. All I do is fold and unfold. Hey, look at old Carrot. His roots are growing up instead of down. Well, somebody tell me which way is up up here. And then there are hazards that are not so cute. Within minutes of a solar outburst, deadly radiation fans out for millions of miles. If the radiation reaches the critical point, the crew will have to temporarily abandon ship and fly for their lives back to Earth in the waiting little shuttle plane. But most solar storms are ridden out. No luck. It's back to work, slaves. Say, how about you people taking a ride up to a space lab? And what? In a space taxi. No kidding. Well, you can't scare me. I push a hack in Brooklyn. <laughs> Let's go. All right. First to Cape Kennedy. The giant bird on the launch pad is Titan III, just about set for the monthly milk run into space. That little yellow bird on Titan's nose is a space taxi. And attached to it is a cargo trailer with five tons of fresh supplies. And that's the April swing shift for the flying lab about to go up and punch in. Three, two, one, ignition, lift
Bird. We have radar contact and are taking control now. Approaching secondary orbit. Three, two, one, mark. How do you read us? I read you five by five, know how? Eight to five, you don't get us on the first go around. Ben! I can see the taxi blinking now. In sight now, yellow bird. Cargo section detached. Moon's in my eyes, I'm turning over. Roger. Oh, sorry, pal. My wallet just went into orbit. NASA says last Mars plates were lousy. Three down, two to stay. A brief pause to complete the changing of the guard and to dock the cargo trailer. And then three happy space workers punch out and head for home. On a roller coaster ride like nothing Coney Island ever thought of. The millions of horsepower man borrowed from the fuel bank to get the taxi up here will be paid back as heat on the way down. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, from now on, space is everybody's business. Just think, space knowledge will directly improve our health and our farms, our homes and kitchens. It'll mean better food, clothes, cars, and better schools. Weather satellites will save countless lives and dollars. It'll help distribute rain from wet places to dry places, even locate swarms of locusts. Communication satellites will bring the whole world right into the living room. You're in Patagonia? Take out your pocket phone and call home. Fantastic. But it's here. Yes, the sun still lights up and gives life to our planet. But only the mind of man can light up and give meaning to the universe. Happy landing. Don't forget stewardesses.